Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you enjoyed part one of sculpting the Indominus Rex from Jurassic World in ZBrush. In part two, I continue the process by adding teeth, adding in geometry for the body, and a lot of the spikes that run down its body. So sit back, relax, and enjoy part two. All right, so I'm starting by just refining the jaw just a little bit. And in here, I'm going through and adding in all the indentations where I want the teeth to set. And uh, it's not a traditional type of dinosaur where the teeth set in, inside the mouth. They kind of exist along the jaw, kind of like a crocodile. So I'm using a Z-sphere here to create uh, a tooth for the upper jaw. A process which, uh, in, in actuality, I kind of would have done differently. Uh, you'll see when I get to the lower jaw how I would have done the upper and I thought about it beforehand, but at least it shows me a, an alternative way of creating a tooth, which I probably won't use very often unless the situation really, really calls for it, because this method I kind of created a bit of a pain in the butt for myself with moving him, moving the teeth around because you kind of have to redraw the, um, the, uh, I forget what they call it inside of ZBrush, but that little line that's going over the tooth with the three circles around it, it it's kind of a pain in the butt to move that around. This is actually, uh, one of the reasons I prefer sometimes creating base geometry in Maya. <clears throat> I skipped ahead in the video, so I didn't waste any time uh, in the video just creating every single tooth because you kind of got the idea of what I went through to create the teeth from showing you the process of placing the first couple of them. And now I'm kind of accentuating the uh, root around the tooth, around all the teeth there. And once again, I close the jaw because I want the teeth to interlock from upper to lower, or lower to upper. So I'm moving the teeth to rest on the outside of that jaw, of the lower jaw, I should say. I'm just kind of using the move brush to reshape the teeth a little bit because the idea with the Indominus Rex teeth is that they're very chaotic looking. They're not very organized, much like a traditional di dinosaur where you have the upper jaw completely encasing the lower jaw. I mean, if you can picture a crocodile's teeth, how they interlock, that's how the Indominus teeth are arranged. So you see in this method here, I'm using a masking approach and using um, the mesh extract feature to create new geometry for the teeth that way. And this was much, much easier and more efficient than using a Z-sphere to create a single tooth and duplicating it several times like I did with the upper jaw. And you can see it creates them as separate pieces, so I have individual control over the jaws and the teeth themselves. And once again, accentuating the, the root where the tooth grows from. And in doing that, you kind of have to reevaluate a few of the structures of the of the lower jaw. Adding more volume to the inside of the mouth. And here I'm using a Z-sphere to create the body of the Indominus. Again, only down to like the chest area, because I do want to add later on the arms and, and uh, hands of the Indominus, 
because they're very cool looking. They have very uh, unique features. For example, the Indominus has opposable thumbs, which is a terrifying concept to think about. And also pretty cool. I mean, since it is a hybrid dinosaur, they kind of had license to make this thing look kind of mutant-ish. So, I mean, there I can't think of many dinosaur species, at least in the carnivore classification, that had um, a thumb type of a finger. But, again, I'm spending time talking about something that's not really in this video. I do explore, I will be exploring that, though. And you can see there I'm just uh, using the move brush to define the plane changes, everything. And I'm starting to use the clay buildup brush again to add some larger scale details on the body. Because the Indominus had, um, in the movie, kind of like a sectioned looking neck, almost like it had uh, armored plates somewhat going down its neck so that's what I'm going for with this and as you can tell I haven't dynameshed this body yet you can see the geometry is very very wonky but that's okay because I'm going to be dynameshing it and kind of solve some of those problems with the with that geometry I'm just more concerned about just kind of getting the art direction in place. And I'm kind of filling in those gaps that I created. And I have dynameshed it by this stage. Maybe probably if you were observant enough, you observed the uh, progress bar of the, of the topology updating. And using one of my favorite brushes, the pinch brush, to kind of bring some of those um, section plates a little bit closer together. Now here I'm going through and I'm deleting a few of the teeth from the upper jaw because he looked, even for the Indominus, he looked just a touch too toothy. So I got rid of a couple of the teeth and... It also helped the look, I think, because you know it made him look like he had a few teeth missing because I left the root there. So you kind of got us, you kind of get a sense that he's lost a few teeth. And here I'm adding in masks to um, extract out the spikes protruding from his neck and body, her neck and body, I should say. The Indominus was a female. using the same type of approach that I did with extracting the teeth from the lower jaw. This is, it was another time-consuming stage. But it really helps make the look of the Indominus come together pretty well. Because this is another feature that's unique to this particular creation. You know, when sculpting it, you really start to realize just what a crazy uh, creature this this was. You know, because there's a lot of features on this particular dinosaur that don't really exist, at least according to paleontologists. Um, these type of features, like the spikes going down its body, weren't believed to have existed on this type of on this type of dinosaur. Because in the movie, its base genome was a T-Rex, and it certainly didn't have these protrusions coming from its body. But uh, who knows what other genetic type of materials other than T-Rex, raptor, cuttlefish, tree frog are put into this particular creation. And it's definitely a lot of fun to sculpt.
and that pretty much wraps up this video. Stay tuned for part three, guys. I appreciate your time for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with the future installments in this series. My name is Kurt Robinson. You guys have a good one. We'll see you in the next video.